Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Brother Tinney. And it's good to see you this morning. I feel like the Lord directed us last night. And as long as he's in charge of it, we just simply try to find our place. And we'll go along with the entire move of the Holy Ghost. And we'll receive the overall blessing. Amen. It's good to see Sister Terry. She and I have something in common. We discuss it oftentimes, and that's the gift that nobody wants, and that's called pain. Man wrote a book about that and put up at the top of one of his chapters, There is in pain a certain element of blank, so that it can never remember a day when it was not, or an hour that it did not exist. It lives only for itself to anticipate new periods of pain. So pain is the gift that nobody wants. Yep. She and I talk about that just a whole lot. But it's good to be in the work of God this morning yes. and feel like that God is doing something for us. It is not a motion in futility. But we believe every stroke brings us closer to where he wants us to be. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. And uh, some have asked me about books. They have them in the back. I've written uh, two books on Acts, written on 1 Corinthians, written on Revelation. Excellent. Excellent. And um, it is designed for the ministry and try to make it available and effective for uh, the layman as well. But uh, we're going to go to the Word of the Lord today, and we believe that's what is going to keep us straight and sustain us. Thank God we'll owe it to the Word of the Lord. Tomorrow I will probably be, to be talking about the greatest efforts of the Antichrist. And um, we'll see what those are that go much deeper than we think just off the hand. It's amazing that the preacher last night got so close to what I'm coming to today. I thought he was going to preach what I was looking at. It's only it's in a little different direction. I believe that Brother Tinney and Brother Cunningham were under the auspices of the Spirit. And we need to be a little bit more sensitive to just let that go ahead and let God do with that what yes, he wants sir. to do. Amen. Amen. Because many good things can be done. I believe that um, we'll draw near to him. He'll make sure that those things become important to us. I'm going to give you today for subject to sake of remembrance the tongues of judgment. Tongues of judgment. And I am going to the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, 21st verse. Sound a little different. Probably be put up on the wall for you to read. We believe in tongues, do we not? Yeah. But tongues are many things to many different people, according to Paul. And we need to find out what they are for us. For me, yeah. what tongues will do. Right. In the law it is written, 21st verse, With other tongues and with other lips I will speak to this people. But they will, thus they will not listen to me, says the Lord. For this reason, tongues are for a sign. Not to them or to those who believe are believing, but to the unbelievers. But prophecy is not to the unbeliever, but to the believer. If therefore the whole church 
comes together at the same time and everyone continues speaking in tongues and there should enter an unbelonger, an unbeliever, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if everyone continues prophesying, they should enter in someone who is an unbeliever or an unbelonger. He will be convicted by all. He will be called to account by all. And it goes ahead and said he will confess that God is in you of a truth. Amen. You may be seated. They divided the congregation in three. Literally, they divided it in three. And that is those who were believers and those who were idiotes, not those who were untrained, but those who did not belong. And then those who were unbelievers. And he explains in the process of service that tongues does different things. And uh, Brother Peyton, young evangelist of my church, already passed out to you the uh, text there. Uh, he stresses for each one what it will do. For the believer, tongues builds him up. Oikidomena, it builds him up to speak in tongues. But uh, to the unbelonger, uh, if it is done rightly, it is a convincing element. It is done rightly and he is convinced of all. He is judged by everybody. And then falling on his face, he will confess that God is there. But the fellow that comes in that does not belong, or be, he is an unbeliever, they are a sign to him. It is not evidence to him that God is there or not, but it is a sign, simonium, pointing to something that will happen in the future. And that sign is of a judgment that is to come. That sign was given from Isaiah 28, 7 and 13. And I believe I have that on an ancient manuscript. And uh, if they would show that, I would give you the opportunity. I'm a member of the Institute of Dead Sea Scrolls Study. And as by a member being part of that, they have uh, sent me uh, part of the, well, they've sent me some manuscripts, and this one is thousands of years old, and I don't know whether or not we will be able to uh, project that up there, but I thought I'd like for you to see that if they could. My text, uh, as far as Isaiah, is found on that particular uh, area. <clears throat> But I'm going to go ahead and read. Paul is quoting, as far as tongues is concerned, he is quoting from the book of Isaiah. And uh, he tells where it is from. It's so far that I can't, I can't uh, really tell about it. But that is, uh, that is uh, thousands of years old, what you're looking at. And it is on Isaiah. So maybe you better not try to read it, okay? And uh, my text, however, will begin, you see this streak within here? My text actually belongs up about beginning in there and will cover the rest of it for what I will read to you. You are looking at an ancient Hebrew text written on skin. I thought you might enjoy seeing that. And uh, they have sent me the unpublished Dead Sea Scrolls, <clears throat> and if time I may be able to talk with you about what is called the smoking gun of the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah. it's called Mechsat Mechasat Torah, the important works of the law, and it's what they tried to keep covered up for 40 years. But my text, as far as Isaiah is concerned, is down in the latter part of that uh, scripture. Thank you. We're talking about what effect 
tongues has upon the unbeliever, it is a sign. He doesn't believe in it. It doesn't draw him to God. It doesn't convince him a thing. It doesn't build him up like the child of God is built up. But it is a sign. <clears throat> Shall I read? This is talking about the priests of Israel. These have reeled through wine and strayed through intoxicating liquor. This is my own translation of that ancient text. And prophets have reeled through intoxicating liquor. liquor. They are destroyed by intoxicating drink. They totter in vision. They move to and fro. All the tables are full of filth and vomit without a dream or without a clean place. Remember, this is the priest that are doing this. Whom will he give knowledge, quoting from them? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those weaned from milk, those that are taken from the breast, the little bitty babies, is that all God's going to teach by this stuff he's given us? For precept is on precept, precept on precept, rule is on rule, rule on rule, here a little, there a little. The Tanakh, which is the most recent translation of the Reformed Jew, says, uh, translates it, monotony, oh monotony, all is monotony. So Paul prophesies from a time when the Jews were getting drunk and were looking at what they were supposed to be teaching and saying it's monotonous, it's monotonous. Who are we going to teach this to? Babies? Is that all it's good for? For with stammering lip and with another tongue he will speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest, cause the weary to rest. But this And this is the place of repose, but they refuse to hear. Yeah. Yet the word of Yahweh was to them, precept on precept, here a rule on rule, line on line, here a little, there a little, that they may go and stumble and be broken and be taken. So the prophecy tells us that uh, they are making fun of what God has given them to teach. Yeah. Monotony, monotony, line on line, line on line. I heard from this pulpit years ago. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And so on and so on. Kind of slung their hands like that. And something way down with inside me said, Whoa. Something happens to us when we begin to belittle yep. the Word of God. And I'm not calling any names, but it happened from this pulpit. And there's a lot of people bought it and, uh, and began to preach. What we ought to be doing is shouting. I believe in shouting, but I believe we ought to preach first. And I believe the Word of God stands out greater. So he says to them, that word, which should have meant a time of repose and refreshing yeah. for them, uh -huh. is going to be a time of judgment, and they're going to go and fall back and be taken and be snared. The tongue of the Assyrian was a stammering tongue to the Jew. It was gibberish to him. And there's a lot of people that call speaking in tongues gibberish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Paul said in the third heaven, he heard words of tongues of men and angels. Yeah. Have you ever heard an angel talk? No. That may sound more like gibberish than anything we ever heard in our life. But uh, I believe that God has used the tongue throughout history. Yeah. For a very specific purpose. One thing it is, it is not a sign, but it is an evidence of the Holy Ghost. For we heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. But actually the use of tongues preceding disaster goes all the way back to the very civilization, first civilization of man. Under the Sumerian culture, and I am studying Sumerian 
And my first textbook is named, I Read Inscriptions from Before the Flood. And uh, it was Amunaki, those who fell from heaven, who cohabited with women, and brought forth men of renown on the earth. The same as Genesis 6, I can tear the Seth out, Sethite theory to pieces. Amen. And because of this, it said Noah was the only generation. His genealogy was the only one untouched. Seth was not. The son of Enosh, where it says they began to praise the Lord, the original says the name of the Lord began to be profaned. And so, uh, Sumer, in the mixing and civilization mm -hmm. mixing itself, yeah. he called for a time, and Sumer says the Tower of Babel was a launching tower. And that which flew through the heavens in Anu flew through the heavens in a ship. And it was called a shim. I said to my uh, professor, I know enough about language, you just can't arbitrarily say that this is this and that is the other. He said, Reverend, if you'll look, you'll find right in the middle of those battles, ships. You'll find rockets. You'll find rockets in silos. If you care to join me after service at the book place, I think I can show you where, well, it'll have to be tonight, it's in the other briefcase. But where there are four or five of these ships, some of them in flight, some of them with men in them, and all of them considered around the Tower of Babel. The same word is used in our Bible called Nephilim. And it comes from the uh, Hebrew word uh, Nephal, which means to fall. And uh, the same story. You have in Sumor what is called Enam Olish, which is the Genesis according to the Sumerians. You've got to take it with a grain of salt, uh, because anything that the devil tells you, you've got to look it out. It's got a little bit wrong in it, and more than a little bit. In fact, they are the ones they claim they made the Adam. But uh, he said it was the Tower of Babel, and the launch tower, and if men do this, there is nothing left for them to do. What is there about building a brick building would cause God concern? But because the word is translated in the Enumayalish uh, as a launch tower, it did cause some concern. And what happens was the tongues that were in their mouth got up one morning and they began to talk a different language. Yeah, yeah. And everybody began to say something different to one another. Yeah, yeah. And all that it said was, this is a sign. And the Enumaili says, horrendous winds came and blew the tower down. And the generations of those people were pushed to the sides of the earth Noah was the only one whose generation was untouched by the Anunnaki or the Nephilim, whatever you want to call them. All right, that's the first time. But in the book of Isaiah, I just read you where that Israel has Assyria at the gate. Things have gotten so bad in Israel that the priests are drunk. They're staggering around drunk, and uh, uh, all of the tables in the tabernacle are full of filth and vomit, and there is no clean place at all. And they say, uh, everything God tells us to say is same old stuff, line on line, precept on precept, precept upon precept, monotony, monotony. Who are we going to teach this stuff? Those that are drawn from the breast, and God said, watch out. 
I'm going to take a tongue that's a stammering tongue to you and by that I'm going to give you a sign that you're going to fall backwards and you're going to be taken and you're going to be snared. So tongues is a sign not to them that believe. Listen to Paul. Tongues is a sign, not an evidence, but he said that tongues is a sign, Samonion, pointing to something else. Tongues are a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Amen. And after the day of Pentecost, speaking in tongues, and I listened last night, him carrying the story of the power of Pentecost and how far it went and when it started up again. And I relived this thought here today. Did you know only about 38 years after that day of Pentecost and it spread all over the place, people were speaking in tongues. They were having church so big and so much they had to have it on the porch. The porch of Solomon. That's where they spoke from. The streets were full. They brought their sick, laid them in cots along the street, and uh, and the shadow of Peter passing by healed them. And the Bible said, and they were all healed. When we get to thinking we've reached the top, let's go measure ourselves by that statement. And they were all healed. Amen. Thank God. And so tongues uh, is a sign of judgment. Judgment is coming. Anytime we hear it, we shout. We wait for an interpreter because we're on a different line. Thank God it means something to us. Paul tells us to the Christian when he speaks in tongues, he's speaking not unto man. But he's talking to God. Do you realize that when you're speaking in tongues, you're not talking to anybody else. You're talking to God. Hallelujah. I ask you the question, have you ever said anything to God? Well, I said, I've said it in my language. I'm asking you, have you ever said it in another language to God? When I am talking in tongues, I am talking to God. No man understands me. And I am talking mysteries. Later on, he calls the ministry the managers of the mysteries. Praise God. It is the minister who must manage the mysteries. The believer is built up. Even in a service where there's other things going on, where there are visitors and we need to keep it quiet, you can sit and speak to God and yourself, thank God, and still be built up on the inside. Let him pray to himself and to God, and he can still be built up. Oh, glory. But when an unbelonger, idios, comes from means one's own, he's, he's a private person. He doesn't belong there. He comes in, and everything is done rightly and in order. There's tongues and interpretation. Something gets a hold of his heart. Hallelujah to God. The first thing it says, he is convicted of everything. Hallelujah. Did you know tongues can convict the heart of the sinner? Praise God. It can convict the heart of a sinner. Not only that, but it can take him all the way through to judgment until he is judged of all. Glory. And the only thing he knows that's left to do is to fall on his face. I believe in doing that in service. If you were to do that in some other churches, they'd help you out the door. One man was hollered out and amen. They come, got him. And he said, well, I was just praising the Lord. He said, we don't do that here. <laughs> amen. Thank God. I believe that we can fall on the floor. Thank God. A sinner should fall on the floor. I'm against this dry eye religion. I'm against people coming down the aisle smiling while they're coming. That's not the way I got the Holy Ghost. I didn't feel like smiling at all when I came down the aisle. 
Thank God I believe everybody knew about me and everybody knew what I was doing and I was sorry to the nth degree. Oh dear God, how am I going to get out of this mess? Hallelujah. Thank God I didn't want anybody to see my face and I told you last night I squalled and snotted the altar bench from one end to the other. Thank God. I tell you, nothing takes good place as good as an old-fashioned repentance. You can't get around it. There's no way to dodge it. Hallelujah. You may want to cut it short and say, just lift your hands and praise the Lord. You may want to cut it short, but God doesn't want to cut it short. He wants that man to stay on in repentance and get it all cleaned out. Get it out all of his heart. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. We know a lot about tongues, but I'm telling you, they're going to play a major role in the coming of the Lord. Amen. After after Pentecost, 38 years, you had the destruction of Jerusalem. Titus, it said, standing on huge towers, announcing into the city, save your holy places. But the temple had been turned into a brothel. And homosexuals were dressed as women and were standing out plying their business, inviting them into the temple. If you want to know how bad it got. And that's why Titus overthrew Jerusalem. Well, we could go on, we could show many other things in history. But uh, any time you hear talking in tongues, it'll mean one thing to one, something to something else, and something to somebody else. And to the fellow that don't believe, and the world is not a believer. It's a sign. You had the outpouring, we call it the latter rain, Azusa Street. Thank God in Los Angeles, Topeka, Kansas, all of the places where the Holy Ghost fell. What did you have? World War I and World War II. It always happens. And now then, we're seeing glossolalia as we've never seen it before. People are talking in tongues you never thought would talk in tongues before. Even even Baptist folks are claiming to talk in tongues some. I'm surprised to see them raise their hands. I'm surprised, surprised at all of that. Why? I'm not going to judge whether it's real or it's unreal. That's left up to God. All I'm telling you, tongues has gone all over the world. Thank God. And last night we shouted about how it happened in Ethiopia. Thank God. We shouted about how it happened in some individual church where those non-denominational people got the Holy Ghost. That's all fine. And that's good. We rejoice. I don't minimize that in any degree whatsoever. But just remember, there must be somebody hanging around that says, I'll never act like that. I'll never do that. Oh, it's not so bad. It's not, I don't know, it's not so bad. <laughs> Thank God. When you really, when you really know what it is, it's not so bad. But I tell you what, the whole world right now is the one that's laughing at it. Even the presidents are laughing at those groups claims to be connected with it in some degree, but still laughs at it other times, sort of whenever it is convenient. May I tell you right now, I, it's going to draw a very fast and quick line to those that it don't believe. You better hold you up a sign and say judgment is coming. Praise God. When God is through with this world, He's going to let that tongues be all over the world. Everybody will have heard of it. Everybody will be familiar with it. And it will not be a secret to any of them. You and I understand that. Because that we have the very goodness that God has given to us by the reason of tongues. It is effective in the apocalypse, 14 and 6. Every tribe, every nation, every kindred, and every tongue 
And this is an angel that is saying this. Tongues are going to be heard by everybody that's left here. Dear God, help me. I want to be somewhere else in the bosom of Abraham. Praise God. Why did God use the tongue to start with way back in Babel? Why didn't he use something else? Because James, the brother of Jesus, says uh, the tongue is a strange thing. It can do a lot of different things. You think you can have a man control till you hear him use his tongue. And then it's all different. (laughs) Amen. You can have him on the floor with handcuffs and have your hand in his hair and... He'll still use his tongue. It's amazing. He said, it's a world of iniquity. We generally think about it as as gossip. Everybody say gossip. You did it a little at one time. Amen. So maybe you know a little bit about that. It, uh, it is a, it is a fire. You can do a lot of things with horses, with bridles. You can do a lot of things with ships, with rudders. But a tongue don't work just that way. It's like it's got a mind of its own. It's spurred by a different spirit. <laughs> oh, it, it, it can be, it can be handled. I tell you, it was a wonderful day. When there was a flame, the word in Greek is tongues separating themselves and setting up on each of them. That must have been the sight. And the tongue that was above their head was controlling the one that was in their mouth. And everybody said, how does this happen? Every man we hear our own language wherein we were born, Medes, Parthians, what have you. We all hear them talking the same language. Oh, God able to direct that tongue from above just a little bit. And the devil says, I think I'll try that just a little bit. And I read his spirit every time I meet somebody that's got that tongue, just his tongue above their head. <laughs> Amen. Oh yeah. It is it is a it's full of deadly poison. It is untamable. Hmm. Oh God, it takes it takes more time keeping your tongue prayed under than the most of the rest of you. Why in the world would God use speaking in tongues as a sign of the infilling of the Holy Ghost? Because that's the last thing a man will really give up. I'll hang on to that where I can say and I can speak my peace to the very last. I'll hang on to that tongue. But it is His glory. And I'm glad it's His glory to overtake me and to rule me so well that there is nothing about me that is left unyielded unto him so much so that my tongue becomes the very vessel that he uses glory to God we've had it from other nations different languages speaking in tongues I believe there's a tongue of an angel that he injects every now and then when we get to heaven I believe it's going to be a different one altogether I don't know what it's going to be but he's able to arrange all of that Hallelujah to God. But right now, I am overwhelmed by the size of the number of people I hear claiming to be talking in tongues all over the world. Believe in three gods, dress like Jezebel, live like the devil, and still talk in tongues. What has religion done for you if it hasn't changed you? That little forked fire above their head that controlled their tongue meant I'm handling. 
even the worst part of them. Everything about that person is going to be easy to handle from now on. And it changes our heart. Hallelujah. By the Word of God. If you need a little help, you come to service and you've got a preacher and you've got a congregation. Somebody will give a message in tongues and somebody will interpret it and it will remove the doubt that you've got in your heart. I'm just asking you today for an, an accumulated appreciation over the years of what you've seen God do by having people speak in tongues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. And once again, I say I am frightened by as many as I hear. Somewhere, doctor's office, have the, have the little ugly box on. And have these women that look like Jezebel talking in tongues. Amen. And it's so powerful. They can blow them over. I don't know whether it's bad breath. My mind's been that way before I could have blowed them over. And it's bad breath. They call that a courtesy fall. I fall for no one. I fall for only one. Hallelujah. When he speaks to my heart, glory to God, and he keeps speaking, my knees get a little lower and a little lower and a little lower. And I say, yes, Lord, you are the God over all, blessed forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But when you can connect with everything that's going on and you're living every way and there's all sorts of adultery, everybody's living with everybody's husband and everybody's wife. The homosexuals. I have never lived in a world that I'm living in right now. Used to, they'd hide. You, you never did know one of them. We had a name for them, excuse me, we called them queers. Never seen a world like it now. They get out in the middle of the street, they act like they're another species that everybody's supposed to pay attention to. Uh, not as far as I'm concerned. You need your head down, you need to be ashamed. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's the last straw that breaks the camel's back. It's when men dishonor their bodies among themselves. Paul said, and this is what got his head chopped off. Uh, you dishonor your body so much among yourselves that you begin to work things that are seemingly impossible. And it starts with the women first. I never thought the dear, lovely woman would ever get into this. But Paul names the woman first, leaving her normal place. Amen, and burning and lust for one another, doing things, and the man. And all the time, talking in tongues is going on. Hey, we could have an ecumenical council. Yeah. All right. Amen. We could announce an ecumenical council. Everybody that is a tongue talker, show up. We're not paying any attention to how you look or where you're going or what else. Just come talking in tongues. And we can have a big meeting, my friend. It'd be a world meeting. But what they need to read is this. That tongues is a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And it is a sign of judgment. You shall stumble, you shall fall backwards, amen, and you shall be taken, and you shall be snared. Praise be to God for the correction that the Apostle Paul has given to us. Hallelujah. That there is a preparation, and there is a readiness that is... Uh, must be taken care of before there is a speaking in tongues. Will the Antichrist take advantage of that element? 
Is it possible? I read of some strange things. Well, we know about, and I'll preach to you some of his efforts tomorrow, very different clone beings and what have you. And you heard me tell I was on a phone conversation with a uh, charismatic Mennonite. And he said, Brother Trees, tell me what is the six in Hebrew? And I said, it's a W. He said, do you mean that it's WWW? Amen. And what I see they're getting into, I'm beginning to wonder how they invade your life. There is nothing that will not be known about you. That it will uh, finally money will be worthless. You'll have to get your money from there. I'm not saying that it is, but I'm just wondering. I'm saying, oh God, come and get us out of here. Yes. I'm ready to go. Did you know what Peter said? Peter said the world has had enough time to prove its program. Their rankous deeds and their unrighteousness, they have had plenty of time to prove whether or not that is the way to go. I preached the other night at home, the devil has had time enough. I believe God's ready to announce on him, time's up. Won't it be a great thing when God announces the devil, time's up. You've had enough time. 2,000 years ought to be enough time for you to get your message across. You've had plenty of time. God gave you plenty of time. Now then, we want a little time to show the rest of the world. Thank God the whole creation is groaning together, waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But he talks about the tongue. Did you know, in spite of the burning sores, in spite of the darkness, in spite of the judgments that come as a result of the vials or the fialis, uh-huh. that these people do not leave their God and their worship. Right. But they curse God. They grind their teeth and they curse God. And they begin to worship. They say, here it is, the beast that lives forever. He will do signs and wonders for them and this will be their praise unto him. Is there any like unto the beast? Is there any other creature that is like him? He is so marvelous. Is there another creature like him altogether? It will be praise that is similar to what is going on now. Hear me now. You that are on the fringes and you don't really have yourself rooted and grounded in the Word of God and you think that talking in tongues is the only thing that's going on in this place may be very possible that you could be snared and you could be convinced and you could be singing the praises of the wrong God after all. So tongues is a sign. I say with tongues becoming worldwide, I believe that the next judgment is the coming of the Lord, that it's right upon us. I would go so far to say that the last judgment that's coming on this world is the great announcement and the great proliferation of speaking in tongues that's going on out there and the Lord will descend from heaven. Thank God. And he says that's enough. And with all the tongue talking that's going on, we'll find out who's who in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah to God. It'll do your heart good today to search it. Somebody said, do you believe you have to talk in tongues every day? I believe you've got to get right with God every day. I believe you ought to pray every day. Thank God. Thank God. And speaking in tongues is a certain extent. I want to pray to the extent to where God takes me over and I am speaking mysteries unto God. It's mysteries. 
It, in the spirit we're speaking mysteries. Paul said, pray for me that a door of words will be open to me that I can make known the mysteries that have been revealed unto me. There is buried in the hearts of these that have spoken in tongues for years. There are mysteries that are in their heart because of the Word of God that the door of utterance needs to be prayed so that they could be loosed and that they could have those mysteries spoken unto them. Hear me. The church is going to be raptured from a world that's talking in tongues. And they're going to say, what's wrong? We're doing what you're doing. Why can't we go too? It's not the talking in tongues that's doing it so much, my friend. It's whether or not you've been convinced that He is the Lord and Savior. Amen. I don't know if somebody at Babel said, oh, this is a wonderful thing. This is a supernatural thing here. Everybody's talking something different. But the wind was blowing all the time, and the tower was coming down, and people were being dispersed all the time, and were being destroyed all the time. I don't know whether they thought it was a wonderful thing or not. I do not think tongues by itself is a marvelous thing. I believe that tongues, as the evidence of the Holy Ghost, is a wonderful thing, and I believe tongues as it is orderly and properly operated within the church of the living God is a build up to the church of God itself. Amen. And I don't want you to quit talking in tongues because what I'm preaching today, I just want you to examine your heart and ask yourself when you feel that coming on you, am I a believer? Do I need to repent before I let it go here? Or do I what I need to do? There needs to be a searching down within our heart today and us go over some of our life. Amen. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. I'm going to quote it a little different. It's not by might nor by power nor PA set that you're saved. What we lack in power, we make up for in volume. That doesn't save you either. And I'm not against a PA set, but I'm just telling you right now, we cannot entertain our way into the kingdom of God. We can't make Him like us. Amen. Amen. I don't care how beautiful they get, and I don't care. I, I've seen them at some of the uh, different situations. They kind of get a little movement going to it. And listen, my friend, if I'm going to go that wild, and I'm going to... The Bible says women do not authentain. Do not use your self-weapon. If it's going to get bad enough that I'm going to uh, be held and be swayed by them doing these songs and doing this uh, choreograph thing, I'll go where it's real. I'll go where they really get with their job. I don't want to see apostolics half doing the job. Are you listening to me right now? Oh, great God, great God. There is a purity. There is a purity that comes. Hallelujah. That can never be imagined. It cannot be, it cannot be thought up. It can only be realized when you get down to the altar as the idiotes, the idiot if you please, the unbelonger. He doesn't know anything. He comes in and he sits there and somebody speaks in tongues and somebody interprets it and that's to his heart and he is judged of all. Glory to God. This is when it starts getting a hold of you. Glory to God. He said things are done decently and in order. He said it, let it be done by chorus. I want it done by chorus. I want it done. And if you don't have an interpreter, just be quiet. Have you ever had to just be quiet? 
Oh, but I'm, 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 I'm so alive here. I'm, I'm, I'm so in it here. Uh, it's got to mean something powerful. If there is not an interpreter, be silent. If we intend to keep the purity that God intended by the tongues that He gives us at the infilling of the Holy Ghost, if we intend to keep that purity, then we're going to have to learn to be quiet when He says be quiet. Hallelujah to God. And then we're going to have to learn how to praise Him when the time of praise actually comes. But it'll be a strange sight altogether if we go up from this place. Amen. We are metamorphosed. We're standing on this earth. Glory to God. And we're changed into another being. And we look back and there will be some people who have been with us in apostolic service. Amen. The greatest danger of all is that you get so close. Somebody asked me about the uh, Arpach question here about service. After a man has once and for all been enlightened, you are only enlightened once. Tasted of the heavenly gift, made partaker of the Holy Ghost, partners... Of the world to come. Partners in the Holy Ghost tasted of the powers of the world to come. If he shall fall away, it's impossible. Amen. Some folks don't like that, but it says it. If he falls away, they cannot renew him again to repentance. Seeing that he crucifies Christ afresh among you and puts him to an open shame. And this is the last thing. He has counted the blood where wished with he was washed an unholy or a common thing. They sing about blood last night. Here of the precious blood of Christ. Thank God these people that have gone away from us and they have apologized because they uh, taught truths that were in the Bible and they're sorry for it. Let me tell you something, my friend. You'll never be re-enlightened. He'll never come back again and start all over with you. You can be forgiven of sins, but you'll never be re-enlightened. The saddest part of it all is that what you actually have done is counted the blood of Christ uncommon blood. That blood that ran down the cross that day and down on the ground. Just the blood of another man. It's just common blood. But as I look at him today, it is not common blood. It is uncommon blood that he has washed me with. Hallelujah. We needed such a sacrifice. A sacrifice that was un- that was holy. A sacrifice that had never been touched by guilt. Hallelujah. Such a sacrifice was prepon, was fitting for us. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for that. Oh, to turn away. It takes no more than just a little bit of this and a little bit of that until you finally are denying what God gave you in the beginning. Praise God. I never want to go back on what He enlightened me with, the truth. Thank God that He is, that he is one God and there is no God like Him. Hallelujah. I don't want to go back on any of that message. I'm still tonight in, in the place waiting for Him. He can use me to talk in tongues if He wants to. He can use me to prophesy if He wants to. He can use me in a moment of faith if He wants to, however He wants to do me. But I'm telling you right now, the last thing this world may hear when it's going up or the last thing the church may hear when it's going up is a bunch of people trying to pe- speak in tongues like they have done in the past. Amen. But the only thing that's going to get you out of here is this. If the same Spirit that dwell in you, that dwell in Him, it's going to make alive your mortal body. Hallelujah to God. The question is whether I got it enough to get out of here or not. I've jumped a few pews in my day and I've run a few aisles in my time, but I've never had the power of God to hit me strong enough until it changed me. Glory to God. Change me and say, 
today I don't know whether I'm in this body or out of this body. Praise God. But if you got that spirit enough, hey brother, I've had him come into my heart at times and I felt like the rapture was in the next moment. I'll never forget a preacher's meeting. I forget where, what general conference it was in. We were having, we were having, uh, uh sacrament and feet washing and, uh, the pack, uh, the crowd was so packed. Preachers were in there standing next to one another. Hallelujah. Up at the front, they were performing, uh, the service of the sacrament and the feet washing and the praise of God was rolling across that wave and a congregation of preachers. It would die down in the back. No sooner had it died down in the back, there'd be another wave of the presence of God that would come over everybody. My son was smaller, standing by me then. He said, Daddy, is this the rapture of the church? I grabbed him by the hand and I said, I don't know. Be still. This could be it right now. Hallelujah to God. I've been in places where I felt like this is the rapture of the church. But I'm happy to tell you tonight to know this one thing. Thank God He'll use you and He'll bless you. But base it upon His Word and upon His Spirit. Because that's the only way you're able to judge. Praise God. Praise God.